My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We are, we are almost thus all done with solving all the math problems from this book. If you're interested in watching a solution to any of the math problems from this book, you will find the solutions to the problems from day number 251 through 400. The problems that appear, the problems that appear in this book in the second edition, they are all almost the same problems and in most cases appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. And we are done with all the problems from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. From day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving quantitative comparison question, quantitative comparison questions out of this book here, the GRE General Test, the 10th edition. If you can find this book from somewhere, that will be wonderful as well. We are solving quantitative comparison questions from this book here because the other two books that I just showed you, the first and the second edition of the revised GRE, we do, they do not provide us enough, uh, enough quantitative comparison questions to practice on and quantitative comparison questions are still a very big part of the exam. So to get some extra practice, we started solving some problems from here. We started the process on day number 401 and right now we are on page number 200. Problem number 15 is what we are about to do. Let's take a look at it. Problem number 15, when it was given in the real exam, only 19%, only 19% of people had luck with it. More than four-fifths of the people missed it. As soon as I finish setting up the post, as soon as I finish setting up the problem on the blackboard, pause the video immediately, solve the problem yourself, and once you have solved it, then you, then you re uh, start the video again and compare your work against the work that we are about to do together. Do you understand? There's no point in trying to do the problem yourself after you already watched how to do, uh, how, how the solution goes. Do you understand? It will be futile. Solve it first yourself, always, not just this time. We are told that S is a set, S is the set of all fractions, all fractions of the form, of the form n over n plus 1. So we have set S which contains fraction of the form n over n plus 1. For example, it will contain 7 over 8, or 7 over 8, because if 7 is our n, n plus 1 is going to be 8. It will contain 10 over 11, it will contain 35 over 36, it will contain 107 over 108, so on and so forth. Let's continue. Where, where n is a positive integer, oh, less than 20, oh, that limits us. So we can't go, we can't go 108 over 109 because the n has to be less than 20. Are you with me so far? Here's the problem. In column A, we have to compare the product product of the fractions, product of the fractions that are, that are in set S versus column B which has 1 over 20, 1 over 20. Product of all the fractions that appear in this set versus 1 over 20. I'm going to now be quiet for 5 seconds, I'll give you a chance to pause and unpause the video. Pause it and solve it yourself. Well, let's get going. The fact that the fact that n is a positive integer, the fact that n is a positive integer, which means we have to start with one. It cannot be zero. It cannot be negative. So let's begin with one. So if n happens to be one, if n happens to be one then the bottom is going to be 1 plus 1. The next one is going to be 2. 2 over 2 plus 1. The next one is going to be 3. 3 over 3 plus 1. The next one is going to be 4. 4 over 4 plus 1. And so on and so forth. So, so on and so forth. Keep in mind, keep in mind that we are told that it has to be less than 20. n, our n here, our n here, we are told, is less than 20. Since it, since it is less than 20, it does not say less than or equal to. It says less than 20, which means we, that we must stop at 19. 
n has to be 19. The very last one is going to be 19. Here is our n, and the bottom is going to be 19 plus 1. You see here, n over n plus 1. n, n over n plus 1, the very last one is 19 over 20. Now what are we supposed to do with these fractions? We are supposed to find their product. We are supposed to find their product. We have to multiply all of these fractions. So let's do that, shall we? Let's do it. Let's do it on the, let's do it on the top. Or maybe perhaps we can continue here. So we have 1 over 2 times 2 over 3 times 3 over 4 times 4 over 5. And it just goes on and on. The last one is going to be 19 over 20. The one before, is, the one before that is going to be 18 over 19. And the one before that is going to be 17 over 18. You get the idea. Are you beginning to see what's going on? Are you beginning to see what's going to happen when we multiply all of these fractions by uh, out? We are looking for the product of all the fractions that are in set S. These are all the fractions in set S, beginning with 1 over 2 and ending with 19 over 20. Let's multiply them out, shall we? What's going to happen, do you suppose? 1 over 2 times 2 over 3, if you have to just look at these two fractions here, 1 over 2 times 2 over 2 times 3, the 2 is going to drop out. I'm getting, so I'm getting so worked up here that I'm going to use some different colors here. 2 over 3 times 3 over 4, the 3 is going to drop out. You get the idea. They're all going to drop out. The 4s are going to drop out. The 5 is going to drop out. They're all going to drop out. The 17 is going to drop out with the 17 at the bottom here. It's going to drop out. The 18, 18 at the bottom is going to drop out with 18 over at the bottom. And finally, the 19. The 19 is going to drop out with that 19. And what are we left with? What we are left with is our 1 at the beginning and the 20 at the very end. 1 over 20. 1 over 20 is the product of all the fractions that appear in this set. The, pro the product of all the fractions beginning with 1 over 2 times 2 over 3 times 3 over 4 times 4 over 5 so on and so forth until the very end 19 over 20. The product of all of these fractions happens to be simply 1 over 20, which is exactly what we have here. The product of all of these fractions is equal to 1 over 20. 1 over 20 times 1 over 20 versus 1 over 20. The answer to this problem is C. The answer to this problem is C. They are all, they are, they are not they are all equal, rather. That's not what I meant to say. They are both equal. The two quantities in the two columns that are shown to us, the product of all the fractions in set S versus 1 over 20, both of those quantities are equal to each other. They are, they are both 1 over 20. And therefore the answer is C. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.